In this episode, we do a full review and test about a new generation parasailer. But first, this is me, Kim. There is Bart. And here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33 foot sailboat, Tranquility. All right, this video is all about our parasailer, Spinnaker. What is the best sail setup for our Atlantic crossing? This or this? Uh, we get some questions about this light wind sail because it's not really common. So we do a tutorial on how to use it and we will compare it against our other sail setup, butterfly sailing. Let's start by setting up the parasailer. You may already have seen it in our last episode, but this one has some extra footage. So I put the four lines within hand reach on the lee side of the boat. We have the entire sail on our fore bed and hoist it through the window. You can lay the sail on the foredeck as well, because it is stuffed in a snuffer, which is a big long bag around the sail. Snatch on the halyard. So there's a green side and there's a red side. It's marked, so the green side goes to starboard and the red side goes to port side. Be sure to hoist it outside the Genoa sheets and guide the bag so it doesn't twist. Careful with the white line. If possible, keep it within your arms so it does not fly away. At the bottom of the snuffer is a hard plastic cap and a red and green band connected to the white line. Be sure to attach it on deck so the entire sail does not fly overboard. You may want to attach it before hoisting. For your own safety, close the hatch. You can see now why you should attach the bottom. Attach the sheets and tack lines. They are all colored, so there can be no mistake about it. It's easy to find the corners. They are attached to a snap hook. Make sure you have the other tack line and sheet around the Genoa, so it can run free. Whoops, the tech line is in between the red and green band. A final check. The info sticker should be towards you. The sheets and parasailer should be behind the red and green band. The sheet should be above the tech line. You're good to go. The port side tech line should be fixed so the tech stays close to the bow. While the four-decker hoists the snuffer, the helmsman puts some tension on the, in this case starboard sheet. The other two lines have to move free. Leave some tension on the control line so the snuffer folds in nicely.
So the Paracelo really looks beautiful, but why the effort? Back to our butterfly setup, the Genoa and the mainsail. If you look closer, you will see the rolling movement in the boat. This movement is created by the waves, amplified by the sail setup. With a normal spin anchor, you will have the same motion. Winds get trapped in the sail, which is good. A lot of power, but the wind wants to get out and goes to the side. Not equally, of course, but the pressure switches between the sides, making the rolling movement in the boat. With the parasailer you have this wing in the middle and that does something else. It gives the boat an upwards pressure. With a normal spinnaker the nose of the boat will be pulled down. All in all less motion in the boat. But what if a gust comes in? Well, because of the wing, any overpressure will be eased out. We have flown the parasailer in 19 knots of wind, downwind, and it was fine. Some say you can get away with 27 knots as well. Crazy, right? We don't dare flying it over 19. We have a little one, so we'll take her down when wind picks up. To get the best performance, you sail her without the mainsail. During our passages, we feel it's better to put in a third reef and pull the mainsail in the middle. We do not have to go forward to pack the main or unpack it. And if you have any trouble getting the parasailer down, you will have an option to block her off with the mainsail. So let's talk a bit about the sail trim of the parasailer. Alright, I'm trimming your parasailer. It's uh, on one side, you just let go your lay sheet far enough to pull the parasailer in front of the bow and if the leeward side drops in you're too far and you have to pull the lay sheet again. I meant to drop in of the windward side of course. So I'll let it go. That's too far. I'm just pulling on the sheet. To get it back. That's where you want to be. It's a parasailer. So you'll notice that the uh, tag line on the bow is a little bit lower than there on the leeward side. Um, you can level it out by releasing the tag line and fly the parasailer a bit more high up. But with little winds, it's nicer to keep it down because you'll get more wind. And if it's blowing harder, then you can let it go and fly it more upwards. Um, but to balance it out a bit more and not have a parasailer standing like this, which will give you a, um, a sail point which is off, you can use a barber hauler to tighten the layward sheet. Uh, driving with the parasailer, you can do it single hand because it's a very easy sail. It doesn't matter if it flaps inside or outside because the chute will always let it stay open. We're using the hydrovane uh, right now, so I'm uh, just going dead downwind. I will start by pulling the other end sheet. in the tech line on the starboard side let go the tech line on the port side
and pull on the... When you let go the tack line and form a lay sheet, the seal gets unstable. In this example, I was not quick enough pulling the new layward sheet. But you can see, because of the wing, it's not really a problem. That's easy. To get the parasailer down, you steer to a wind angle of 120 to 90 degrees again. When the foredecker is ready, the helmsman releases the leeward sheet until the pressure is out. The foredecker quickly pulls in the first part and wait a bit to see if the wing is still in front of the sail. Gently slide the snuffer over the wing. When it's in there, haul in fast. Take the four lines off. Do not run the engine until you have your lines nicely stowed away inside the boat. We take down the sill through the forward hatch. We have a blanket on our bed to prevent salt getting in our mattresses. As mentioned before, we have the mainsail up in the third reef nowadays, but we have never had to use it to block off the Paris area to get it down. During our Atlantic crossing, we have used our parasailers for more than two weeks. Uh, we think it's an easy setup uh, after some practice, so you get uh, used to managing all the lines. Um, we even thought uh, to let it stand during the night or with stronger winds, uh, because it really uh, slows down the motion in the boat. Uh, but with a toddler on board, we didn't feel comfortable with it, so you, we think you need a crew or not a toddler on yeah. board. <laughs> That's because um, for us it was very hard to get sleep during our crossing because we were only with the two of us. We need to sleep at night because during the day uh, Liz is awake and we cannot catch up some sleep during the day, or at least hard. So um, if you're sailing it overnight, you have to wake each other up to get the parasailer down. Uh, that was not for us. We need a sail setup we can uh, handle alone during the nights. So that's. But we really thought of it because the movement of the boat gets so relaxing, and it's hard to show you that on camera. Uh, so if you have the chance with someone who has a parasailer, go sail with them because the, the, we really were impressed by what it does to the motion of the boat. So if you are in the Caribbean. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Bart really wants to test a parasailer for more than 20 knots of wind. Um, so Somebody has to convince my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, just uh, if you're in the Caribbean, come over and uh, we'll see what we can uh, try. <laughs> well, this was it. If you have any questions, please let us know. And for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all.